This is tough. I wanted to do this. I wanted to bring this to the church for a long time. And it's probably because of my upbringing. But we're going to start off. We're going to go through this week that Jesus went through. This was a horribly stressful, busy week for Jesus. And we're going to start out in Matthew 21, 7 through 11. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Palm Sunday, it starts it all. A big parade, just Jesus. Not just any old parade, something different. Something just isn't quite right. It's a big celebration. Everybody's shouting. Everybody's excited and happy. But Jesus is riding on a donkey. A young donkey never before ridden. Jesus never before riding. He always walked everywhere he went with his disciples. Something's going on. People shouting, Hosanna to the king. King of kings. Excitement and laughing. Laying palm branches and coats on the road for the donkey to carry Jesus to walk on. Some of them have seen him do miracles. This is the one they've heard about. This is Jesus, the Messiah. But what was he thinking? He knew the score. It's Sunday. He has one more week. He knew what was happening, and he knew all these people who will be hiding come the end of the week. Was he already thinking, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was on Sunday. And through the week, there's a lot of things that happened. At Palm Sunday, Monday, Jesus goes to the uh, temple and confronts the money changers. Tuesday, he teaches in the temples. Wednesday, Judas and the Russian so or Roman soldiers got together and plotted his betrayal. And then Thursday, the Passover, Last Supper, washing the feet, Gethsemane, Matthew twenty six seventeen through thirty five. Uh, I'm not going to read that. This is something we're all too familiar with. We hear this story constantly about. The Last Supper with Jesus. Uh, we know it by heart. We could probably recite most of it. And all that, Jesus went through knowing what was happening. All but one will forsake me and Peter. Blessed Peter, he will deny me three times. And Judas, he will betray me with a kiss. And now, I'm going to break bread with them. Matthew 26, 36 through 39. Jesus went to, with his disciples uh, to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here. while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and trouble. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell down on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he came back and they were sleeping. My beloved disciples, my sheep, if you only knew what was about to take place, and I can't protect you from seeing this, my heart is so heavy. 
while he was still in the garden, Judas came to him. Matthew 26, 47 through 50. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priest and the elders of the people, of all the people that would go out, the chief priest and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a sign with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. I'm not for sure that's the way I could have responded. I know we have all felt betrayed at one time or the other, but how do you react? I bet the betrayal wasn't anything quite as serious as a kiss sending you to your death. Someone you love, someone you spent so much time with, someone who has seen all the miracles that you performed, and now, out of nowhere, for a few pieces of money, for a kiss, you gave him up. Luke twenty two sixty six through seventy one, Jesus is condemned to death. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. And Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then he said, Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We've heard it from his own lips. Jesus, why won't you speak up? Tell them who you are. Why won't somebody, all these people, somebody speak up? Where are the lepers that were healed, the blind that now see? All those 5,000 you fed with three little fishes and five loaves of bread. Where are all those people just calling you king of kings, laying palms on the road? Where are they now? Pilate, with all his power, doesn't have the courage to do what is right. He knows what is right, and that he washes his hands of it. How can they stand there and watch you be betrayed like this? Why so unfair? But wait a minute. Have I treated others this way? I'm sure I'm guilty of not speaking up for others when they needed my help. Have I given in to pressure to take a safe route, an easy path, instead of the right path? Matthew 27, 27 through 31. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. They knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After that, they mocked him, and after they were done, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. I cringe at the thought of the sight. A crown of thorns being placed on my Savior's head and being pressed down on his head, the pain he endured and the shame. And he did it for me and you. We think of a king living in a great castle with all the people waiting on him, taking care of his every need, doing everything he ever needed, wanted. Not my Jesus, not my king. My king is the shepherd who cares for his sheep, takes responsibility for their well-being. 
I'd like to think I'm ready to follow a king like that. A king who offers peace and love for one another. But am I? Am I ready? Am I ready to give up power and control over my life and accept a different kind of crown than I was expecting? A little different glory than I thought I had coming? Am I ready to serve and not be served? Can I follow His example? Jesus falls the first time. A young man in his 30s, only 32 years old, forced to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders. How faithful could you be? Having saved so many, loved so much, healed so many, fed so many, and now this. Now with the weight of it all, he falls and the soldiers whip him and prod him, Get up! Get up! And then he looks up and sees his mother. Jesus meets his mother. Her son. The thoughts that must be going through their heads. The pain they're feeling. All that Jesus has done. All He's done is heal the sick, teach love, and live love. Love for His Father, His family, and love for us. What pain they have to feel seeing one another this way. I can only imagine what's going through their heads and hearts. And trying to prepare this, it's kind of rough going through it myself thinking of what my sins put him through. Mark fifteen twenty one. A certain man from Serene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. I can only try to imagine the weight of that cross you carry. Yet it's not the weight of the wood that presses down on you. It's the weight of my burden you carry for those you love so much and the weight of my sins. You came to give us life and we give you pain and death. I would like to think that if I had been there, I would have run up and helped you carry that cross. But would I? Would I have risked being forced to join you on a cross? Would I have been so eager if it meant that I might have to die? on the cross and besides what would my friends think if I jumped in it's not easy to see the needs of others when I'm so hung up with my own problems too much on my own plate to worry about others but wait you said something about taking up my cross and following you something about being a servant of all putting myself last and others first. Is that what it means to be a servant? Are you showing us what it means to be that kind of a servant? The next one, Jesus meets Veronica. Veronica is only mentioned in the way of the cross. She's not mentioned in the Bible. But the scholars looking it up believe that she is the woman that was suffering from bleeding and touched Jesus' cloak and was healed. Veronica wiped the face of Jesus with her veil, and His blood and tears left her with a lasting impression on her veil, and I'm sure on her heart. What love, what faith to step out like that and show compassion to her Lord, our Savior. What a chance she took. Could you or would you step out like that? Jesus falls again. Once again, the Roman soldiers are hitting him, hollering, Get up! Get up! Poking him! We've all been watching TV. We've all got all the media around. We're all watching this. And we've all seen the show showing someone getting a, a death sentence in prison, and they're given whatever they want for separate midnight 
they're in a cool place, they're in a clean place, they're taken down and given a shot so they feel no pain. This wasn't a slow walk down an aisle. After a choice separate midnight, this was a long, hot, dirty walk down a rough dirt road and up a hill carrying a big wooden cross that someone was going to cruelly nail you on and drive nails in your hands and feet then hang you on that tree and let you die because you loved us. What love He shows for us. Luke 23, 27, 31. A large number of people followed Him, including women who mourned and wailed for Him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless woman, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will they do when it's dry? Jesus meets the women on the way. As you struggle along the road towards that awful place of death, He sees a group of women among the crowd following, already grieving your impending death. Jesus has heard this wailing many times before at funerals, but now they're mourning for Him. He's always showing equal compassion to the women He has encountered across the years. He seems to understand their unique burdens that women bear in the world and a culture that pushes them to the margins of society. So here, as you bear the most unimaginable pain of body and heart, you stop to speak to them. You're about to die. And you are more concerned with others than your own suffering and pain. You can't think He didn't love you. John 19, 23-24 When Jesus was crucified, when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took His clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide who will get it by the lots. This happened that the Scripture might be filled, that they said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. Jesus, I want to follow you on this journey. But I cannot watch. You being humiliated this way. You came into the world with celebration and anticipation. Angels sang in the heavens to celebrate your birth. The Magi came to pay homage to you as king. The people followed you by thousands as you taught on the hillsides. They wanted to make you a king. Just a few days ago, you, they followed you in the streets singing praises to God, shouting, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Yet now, you're forced to suffer. You stand alone as the soldiers strip the last thing you possess and play games to see who will claim it. Just yesterday, you removed your cloak and washed the feet of your disciples. Are you still teaching us, Jesus? Is this what a servant is? Mark 15, 23, 32. They offered him wine and myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see who would get each. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of charge against him, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you're the one going to destroy the temple and build it in three days? Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, 
This King of Israel come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults at him. I shouldn't have looked up. This is so hard to watch. It's so hard to think about. And what this week was to Jesus. And this is the way it ends. I hear the sharp crack of the hammer against the nail and shudder. It sounds so final. Is it over? Did all of those wonderful lessons you taught by the seaside mean anything? I want to rage at this injustice, this cruelty of the Romans, the hypocrisy of the high priest and religious leaders, the cowardice of the disciples, the treachery of Judas, the crowd of people. Do they not remember you spoke of loving one another to our enemies? Didn't they listen? Don't they learn anything? Yet, I'm guilty. Would I have been any different? Am I just as guilty as those Romans driving those cruel nails? My sins are driving those nails. I'm so sorry, Jesus. For was I when he crucified my Lord. In Luke 23, 39, 43, the criminals speak to Jesus. One of the criminals who hung there hauled, hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. How many times in the evening have we ever sat around with our kids and they're asking for something and we tell them, I don't know right now, I'm kind of busy, I don't have time. And here's Jesus dying on the cross and has time for the criminals. Could you? Would you? Remember, like that criminal, if we ask sincerely, we too can be forgiven. John 19, 25, 27, Jesus cares for His mother. Near the cross of Jesus stood His mother, His mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clovis, Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her home and took care of her. Jesus, these women have been with your mother for so much of your journey. Yet we shouldn't be surprised they're surrounding her now with love. There is Mary Magdalene since she drove out those seven demons she has never faltered in her support. You made her whole. And what must be going through your mother Mary's mind as she's thinking of the visits from the angel who announced your coming? The words of Simon, who took you at eight days, held you in his arms, and declared that you were God's salvation to the world. What she must be feeling. I'm so sorry, Mary, for the pain my sins have caused. Mark 15, 33 through 39. Jesus dies on the cross. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, He's calling to Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar and put it to on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion heard this, who stood in front of Jesus, 
saw how he died, he said, surely this is the man was God. Are we any different now? For most of us, we see our mistake way too late after the damage is done. It was dark as night in the middle of the day. The earth trembles. The curtain is torn right down the middle. You are gone. And now, now we realize our mistake. You never stopped loving me, even to death. Oh, how I wish I was showing my love for you more. Father, I know it's not too late for me to change. Father, help me. Help me to love others as you love us. And finally, John 19, 38-42. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. When Pilate's permit, with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who had earlier visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. And at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever laid. Because it was a Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Consider them carrying the body of their loved one to the tomb. Consider his mother Mary, arranging his body in the tomb with her own hands. As they closed the tomb and withdrew, what pain was in their hearts. Jesus, I am so sorry that you had to suffer for our sins. But we know, we know from what you taught us. We know from what we see with the criminals on the cross that if we ask forgiveness, we will be forgiven. And we know that this isn't the end of the story because we know next Sunday you rise from the dead and seats at your right hand of the Father and place for our forgiveness because He loves us. Amen. Father, we come to your house to worship. We come to learn. And I hope this morning, Lord, we had a chance to learn and to see the pain that you went through for us. Lord, I hope that you can forgive us, heal our hearts.